Oh, look at that. <laughs> What's going on there, YouTube? This is SCL020 representing JVS. I just finished watching and reviewing uh, not for review for uh, one way or another, 18th episode of the 7th season of the Vampire Diaries. And I have to say, I really enjoyed it. More than I thought I would. Um, because the stakes have never been higher. Like, I, I mean, the ramifications of the things that they did two episodes ago, I was like, this is unforgivable. How are you going to sit there and do this? Not only to Damon's character, but just in general. It just made no sense. But then they came off last episode. They totally impressed me. It's the way of Paul Wesley's, Ian Holmes, Summer Holders, Dynamics as Brothers, that, that snow sequence, everything they did with Stefan, I thought it was just on point. And then raising the stakes with having somebody that is a serial killer have his body, I was like, oh my gosh. And then this episode, this same serial killer, he's like calling Damon out. Like, look, you better bring Raina here. Because if you don't bring her head here, you're never going to get your brother's body back. And basically, Stefan's sitting there dying. And it's like... I really enjoyed the high stakes that were really kind of going and platforming. Not just that, I, I realized that I've loved Rick and Damon's relationship over the years. Like, if I go back, like, when Rick was dying and, like, Damon was the only person there for him, when Rick was an alcoholic, Damon was the only person there for him, when Damon lost Elena, all these different kind of things that have happened, their relationship strain. It's like, now I come to realize that. I don't like them together. And I don't even know if they're necessarily good for each other. Like, one of the things that is said by Rick at the end of the episode, it's like, I don't want you in my life anymore. Like, I've moved past it. Because I kept on thinking to myself, I was like, how can Rick do this? Like, why would he, you know, be with, you know, Stefan's, like, love of his life? It's like, it's so selfish a decision. And even, like, the way that he's nonchalantly not wanting to really help Stefan, I was like... It ain't for this. But I realized that these two aren't meshing. Like, they're not, they're not friends anymore. Because one thing happens towards the end of the episode, like, Stefan, they find Stefan's body, they get the guy, and that, that whole undertaking was just crazy, but they, they take him out pretty well. But the guy, he, he cornered Stefan's body, he almost killed Stefan. I mean, Stefan, I, I commend him because he was literally on his deathbed. And he's still fighting. And I, that's one of the things I love about his character. Paul Wesley, he owns that character. But um, they get the guy. And basically, Valerie is basically risking her life to bring Stefan over. It's already apparent that she wasn't strong enough because she was trying to build up her strength just to do it. And I was like, Damon didn't care. I was like, bro, if Valerie dies, bringing Stefan back, Stefan will never forgive Damon. Like, regardless, like, I mean, one thing that does come out of it is that Valerie decides that, I mean, they do make it out. They do make it out. But I was like, dude, if if, if he would have did pushed her too hard and she would have killed herself, bro, I, I would have been messed up, to be quite fair. But um, I, I didn't like that, that character choice for Damon to be Damon like that all over again. It just, it just bugged and irked the heck out of me. Not just that, him not going and seeing what's going on with Bonnie, you know? I, I was like, he was asking opening questions to Rick, but I was like, dude, why would you not just ask? Um, and I'll get to Bonnie really soon. I'll try to make this as short as possible, but um, the thing that comes out of it is you find out that Stefan really is still in love with Caroline, and Valerie recognized that. Like, she, she knows that she's all for him, and if they were human, maybe that would have happened, but it's apparent that he didn't want to have his life sacrificed on her behalf, you know, because he didn't feel like, I, I don't know, I don't, I don't know her rationale behind the logic behind it, but she can assess basically that he still really truly loves Caroline. And I can assess that too. Um, and so she's leaving, you know, I, I was like, okay. I was trying to figure out though why Caroline, every single time that Stefan would leave a letter, would send him back. I was thinking either Rick did it, or Valerie did it. That didn't get explained. I thought that was something that they could have missed. I actually stopped this from the episode being as good as I thought it was. But Bonnie, okay, with the whole situation with Bonnie, I was like, when I realized that she was in the psych ward, I was like, dang, she that jacked up. Then you find out that she's undercover trying to figure out what's going on with the armory. And on top of that, Enzo had been giving her the pills. And see, this, this could have been explained so much easier. Then all the crap that was happening, I was like, 
why was Nora getting feed these pills and why was she get? I didn't understand it. Now, just in just a small amount of time, with Bonnie Bennett articulating it to me, and through certain stanzas, they show me, okay, these pills are used to suppress, you know, um, magic, but they use Raina's DNA or her blood to do it, but the overusage of it actually kills the host. And I was like, that now I understand. That makes validity to understanding why it happened. I mean, I don't know if they try to keep that as an illusion or just wanted to kind of push it in there really quick. But this at least made me understand. And I was like, oh my gosh, this girl's gonna die again. Really? So <laughs> Enzo is freaking out. And Raina was the one that broke the news to him. And um he had kidnapped Raina because at the same time uh, Damon was gonna try to kidnap Raina and kill her, and basically Enzo was like, "No, like I, I have other things I have to do." And he basically brought up Bonnie's name. And the thing about Bonnie's episode, she's so strong and she's really still cunning, still sharp. She's not as weak as I thought she was. Looking at the flashbacks, matter of fact, she's faking it all. And you come to find out, she's really trying to actually intercept this person that is a cousin of one of the people and trying to figure out what's happening you know what is it that they want her for and you come to find out it's for some vault that unleashes something and you know this is another big threat oh my gosh the melodrama for that i don't know where that's gonna go hopefully they don't kill bonnie but i can tell you this the end of the episode messed me all up because cat grant she does two things perfectly one the realization of the fact that she's dying, it brought her back to like where she was before, before she died. Before when she was just like, there's no hope left, you know? You can just see it all over her face. And it was like, at first she was all like happy and love and all this kind of stuff. And she was debating before Enzo even got there, opening Damon's letter. She had never opened it. And I was like, what did he say, you know? And I'm curious to see what he said. Either way, when he broke that news to her, she was just shattered. And at that moment, he was like, I promise you, you're not, you're not going to die, you know. And at that very moment, <laughs> Damon walks through the door. And it was like, you could tell. The second thing is she was broken, happy, and at the same time, destroyed all over again. Because she saw him, you know, it's, 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 it's a realization that he actually did come. And then for him to come at her weakest moment and understand that she's about to die, like, it's like, dang. And he couldn't say anything. David couldn't say a thing. They they did that sequence perfectly. It, it, it totally messed me up. I, I literally was like, oh my gosh. I actually did a reaction to it. I think I'm going to post it up, but I'm going to post it up without any um, audio at all because the WB is, is like, anyway. <laughs> Hopefully y'all enjoyed this though. I gave the episode a 9 out of 10. Hopefully y'all enjoyed this first rate spoiler review for Vampire Diaries episode 18. <sighs> Man, can't wait for the next episode actually. I'm glad I didn't quit this episode or didn't quit this series. Peace y'all. Oh, whoa, before I say that, how are they going to get out of this situation? Because now, <laughs> Stefan's got his life, and now he's faced with the opportunity to be able to reach the woman he loves again, she's got kids. And then on top of that, Damon is faced with the opportunity to try to preserve his friendship, or maybe declaring the love for somebody, and she's about to die. So, how are they going to do this? Anyway, I'm gone. <laughs> Lady, y'all, peace.